Right then, so next vid is doing part B. So part B is saying find the time taken for the velocity to hit the ground. So vertically, my distance is zero. So for part B, for the flight time, vertically, my distance is zero. So S is zero. U, we said, was 28 sine 20. V, not fussed about. A, minus 9.81. T is 101. So the one thing without V is S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So 0 is 28 sine 20 times by T minus 9.8 T squared. So I've actually got, oh no, it's a half AT, isn't it? A half times by 9.8. So I've actually got um, a quadratic there. So I'm going to take the t squared on the other side. I've got 4.905 t squared minus 28 sine 20, lots of t, is equal to zero. I could just stick that straight into poly, couldn't I? With 4.95 minus 28 sine 20 and c is zero. And it'll give me t is zero. And t is 1.95 seconds to free sig fig. There. So that's not too bad there. So I've used poly. A is 4.905. B is minus 28 sine 20. And c is 0. So that's part B done. So that's all right. Uh, so it says, when it hits the ground, what's its speed and direction? Now, this is a little bit sneaky. This. Because of the symmetry... If you think about it, it's landing at the same components, just going in the opposite direction. So if you imagine that keeps on going there, then that's 20 degrees below because of the Z angles. So part C is a little bit sneaky. And so it's all to do with the symmetry. You can't do this if it's not landed on the, you know, where it is symmetrical. Um, so it's 28 meters per second at 20 degrees below the horizontal. There. But I'm only I'm only doing this very very sneakily horizontal because of the symmetry. If it wasn't landing in line with it, I can't do that. So if I was kicking it, if I was chucking it off a roof, I couldn't do that. I'd have to work it out separately. Is there a question for you on the next page or into the next one? So there's another example there. I'm at three minutes thirty, so I'm going to stop.